Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are doing some integrals in this video involving this formula that gives us an inverse secant as our answer. So doing integrals in the form du over u times the square root of u squared minus a squared. We've got these three examples we're going to work. You can follow along in each of these, or if you have one in particular you wanna see, you can go ahead and skip to that example. For our first one here, integral of dx over x times the square root of 4x squared minus nine. So you'll notice here in our example, we've got some u's and a's. We wanna remember with these that a is actually just some constant expression, and u is going to be something that involves a variable. So when we look over here at constant and variable, you can see this is variable squared information minus constant squared information. If you remember the inverse sine formula for this, it was a squared minus u squared, so that would be when the constant is in the front minus the variable squared term. So here you can see this fits our formula over here. This is going to be our u squared, and this is going to be our a squared. And we're going to focus on this part of the formula, and we'll worry about this extra u on the outside later if we need to adjust anything for that, or if it magically just works out the way we need it to we'll just kind of have to see on a case-by-case -case basis. So if I'm choosing u squared to be 4x squared and a squared to be 9, let's write down the information we have so far. So we have a would then be 3 if a squared is 9. And what would u be? Well, I need u squared to equal 4x squared. So 2x times itself actually gives us 4x squared. So u is 2x in this case. For our formula, we also need a du. So let's go ahead and say du is equal to 2 dx. Now in these examples we want to stress maybe working out your dx, your du part first, worrying about whatever's extra out here at the very end. We'll show you what we mean by that. So here I have everything in the root taken care of. If I want to replace my dx, I'm close here. I don't exactly have an expression that says dx equals, but I could divide both sides by 2, and that would give me 1 half du is equal to dx, right? So I could replace this with 1 half du up here, and that's my dx. What we would normally do at this point is probably bump out the 1 half and treat it as a constant multiple outside of our integral. But notice what you have here. What you have here left to substitute in terms of u is x, and really u is 2x. So this is not exactly u, and we can't exactly replace it the way it is now. But if I take my 1 half, Right? And I think of the 1 on top here, and I think of the 2 now down here, and I use my 1 half in that way, now I have a 2x here, right? And that can be replaced with the u that I need to be in my formula there. So instead of bumping out the constant multiple, we can actually use it to create exactly the u we need to be a part of our formula here. So now our integral is going to be just du on the top. We do have the u we need on the outside and our root here becomes u squared minus a squared inside. This is exactly the definition, so now we just replace it with our formula. Our answer should look like one over a, inverse secant of u over a, plus our constant of integration. And now we just go back and replace everything, right? a is three and u is two x, so we get one third inverse secant of two x over three, plus our constant. Looking at our second one here, we have the integral of dx over x times the square root of 5x squared minus 1. So it looks just like this here. We've got variable squared minus constant squared. So this is going to be our a squared here in the back, and this 5x squared is actually going to be our u squared in the front. Let's go ahead and write down that information. If 1 is a squared, then a is just 1. And now we need to figure out what u is. What times itself gives us 5x squared? Well, we know x times x gives us the x squared part. What times itself gives us the 5? Well, it would just be square root 5, right? So this x is not inside the square root, but we have square root 5 times x, and that's our u. So now we need to figure out du. Well, that would be the derivative of this, so that would be square root 5 dx. Now think about from here what we need to get dx. I would need to divide both sides of this by the root 5 part, right? So dividing by root 5 here, that's saying 1 over root 5 
du is equal to dx. So I have a replacement for dx now. This is going to be 1 over root 5 du. Remember the last thing we're looking at here in these secant formulas is going to be this u that we're trying to make out here. So think about u needs to be the root 5x. So again, because I have a 1 over root 5, I want to think of this 1 here and this root 5 down here instead of bumping it out as a constant multiple and using the 1 over root 5 that way to create this root 5 times x, and that gives us the u that we need for the formula again. So for this one, we'll go ahead and say the integral of du over u times the square root of u squared minus a squared. And that's the exact formula, so we write down our exact formula, 1 over a inverse secant of u over a plus c. And now let's go ahead and plug in our u and our a. If I just throw everything in there unsimplified, we get 1 over 1 inverse secant of u over a would become root 5x over 1 plus c. Now we don't need any of these over 1s. We don't actually need this entire 1 over 1 here, right? So let's just go ahead and say the inverse secant of really just root 5 times x plus our constant here. Looking at our last example, the integral of dx over the square root of e to the 2x minus 1. And you might look at this one and say, well, this just looks like a u substitution. This doesn't really look like this because there's nothing on the outside to be part of this u. And that's a good eye at first, but as we go through this, I think you'll see that that sort of takes care of itself. And this is another reason of why we think about maybe looking at making this u work out last when we do our substitutions. So if we just sort of start treating this as our u squared, and we start treating this as our a squared, so then we'll be thinking about if a squared is 1, a is 1, and if u squared is e to the 2x, then u is actually e to the x, right? Because e to the x times itself gives us e to the 2x, right? So this is actually e to the x squared over here. Now, if u is e to the x, then du, the derivative of this, is itself, right? So we get e to the x dx. But now what we have over here is actually dx, right? So I need to figure out what I'm going to replace dx with. What I wouldn't normally do is start putting x terms on the other side. Normally we want our u and our x information in this statement over here very separate so it's easy to see how x's all become u's and everything works out nicely. But for this one here, if I solve for dx, so this actually tells us, it's kind of strange, right? du over e to the x equals dx. And you're saying, well, but yeah, if I put that in for dx, then I'm, I'm still left with some x stuff, and I don't want x stuff. The whole point is just to get u stuff, right? That's why we're doing the substitution. And you're right, but the thing is, we've got an extra u hanging out here, right? And u is e to the x, and I don't have that e to the x that I need. So if I think about this 1 over e to the x that I have, what I really am going to do is bump this e to the x down here, and then that's the extra u that I need for the definition here. So then this actually becomes just du. That e to the x actually makes the u that we desperately needed on the outside. We have our, of course, u squared minus a squared, and now we just use our definition, right? So we get 1 over a inverse secant of u over a plus c. We'll go ahead and put our stuff in there. Um, let's go ahead and skip the over 1, right? So we have 1 over 1, that just becomes secant here, inverse secant. u over a, e to the x over 1 is just e to the x, and so this integral is actually inverse secant e to the x plus c.